and we will cut those into the center of the deck and in just a split second they are shifted back to the top. You reach over to ante and now your slug is on top. Welcome to the one-handed shift. looks like. Alright, so you may be wondering why learn a one-handed shift. If you're at the card table, uh, it can come in very handy uh, because the heat tends to be on the dominant hand. Okay. While it's following these chips, I've already done the shift. All right, let's let's look at that again. Now I could uh, be placing chips here and come up and scratch the back of my hand, and I've done the shift. Well, we have our four aces as our slug on top. The cards get cut. The aces go into the center. And as we are getting our ante ready, we have shifted the aces back to the top. So that is why a one-handed shift is useful. Now let's get into the mechanics. So you start a mechanics grip and you have a break between the two, the top and the bottom half, in your two packets. And there's going to be uh, a few different motions. You can go straight from a break. You lift that top packet onto the fleshy part of the thumb. And while you're doing that, you're gonna take your pinky finger and put it beneath the deck. Now you're gonna pull to the left with your thumb and push out with your pinky until the packet's clear and do the pass, okay? Now let's take it step by step. Let's break it down. You start out with mechanics grip. Let's place that pinky underneath the packet. Now, I want you to come up and instead of putting this right on top, I want you to open your thumb out and set the top packet right on top of the ball, the fleshy part of that thumb. If you were to take these packets off, it would kind of look almost like a like a kung fu grip, <laughs> okay? And just start from there. Now, you don't have as far to go to clear. And this is a good way to learn the basic mechanics of this pass. See how easy that is? Now once, once you get that down, and start making it go a little closer where it's about that far out, okay? Eventually, you'll be able to do it from a break where you lift onto the fleshy part of the thumb and shift, lift and shift. Here's a quick pro tip for you. The deeper you get that pinky finger underneath uh, the bottom of the deck, the more control and the more speed you'll have when doing the shift. Now, there is a second way to do the pass. Instead of using your pinky, you're just letting that hand drop, kind of like a Herman pass, and then letting that packet fall behind it. So again, you can start with it already separated. It's a great way to just get used to the motion. 
you know, and once you can, once you can do that with relative ease and speed and fluidity, then you can just start from a regular break and do your thing. So version A uses this pinky to push it over like that. Version B uses really the, the ball of your palm here to push the bottom packet up, the thumb to pull the top one over, and then they both come back. So you got the pinky or the palm. Either way works fine. You can do both of these techniques with a cut card. All right, let's look at that again. And with a cut card using uh, the pinky technique. So you have your break. And when you're ready to do the pass, you're gonna slide that pinky above the cut card, but underneath the first packet. And then you just do the pass as normal and that packet will fall on top of the cut card. Let's take another look. You can also get around the cut card with the other method, just like that, okay? Now what you do here is you're kind of um, pulling the cut card over, kind of like if you were gonna do a Greek deal. You let the, the top ball of your palm there uh, slide it to the left a little. And what'll happen is this top packet will catch it as it's going over and it'll fall right in there. Version B from this angle with a cut card, something like that.